Warning, the following audio is only aimed for beings who are in the need for scares and frightful storytelling. There will be some disturbing content and unsettling imagery in this video you are about to watch and or listen. If you feel uncomfortable or this isn't your cup of tea, you may click off immediately. However, to the ones who are staying, go right ahead and get all cozy in your blankies up in your headphones, turn off the lights, and enjoy this story. One of the most terrifying things in this world are haunted dolls. What will happen to you if you buy a doll for one of your children and then discover that the doll moves at night on its own? and scare them. What will you do? Horror has many faces. I'm going to talk today about the haunted doll, Harold, in the Ghost Museum in America, a true horror story. The Harold doll is the first doll sold on a website that sells clothes and strange things around the world, which is an eBay site and it was sold at an auction in order to sell the doll. When the doll smiles at them and opens its mouth, everyone gets sick and everyone in the house for no reason. The second-hand doll caught the attention of a young man and caught his eye with his very strange and striking features at the same time. The young man was curious about the strange doll and decided to buy it and take it to his house. And then everything in the house changed. His life changed a lot and a lot of strange things happened without any explanation. Strange things were happening to those in the house without exception to anyone. Many diseases suffered by his family and all its members in severe fatigue. The dishes were smashing on their own after midnight, but nothing strange appeared or suspicious of the doll itself. After some time, the doll began to move at night. Everywhere, and changed its position in the room at night. They woke up to find it in a different places. James realized and was very terrified. And he felt that there was something strange in that new doll. Since I centered the house and strange things were happening, the family decided to get rid of her, but he refused and hid her inside his room without anyone knowing. And at one in the middle of the night one day, James took the doll out of his wardrobe and put it on the rocking chair next to his bed. And he kept looking at her a lot. And here the doll smiled and the movement of her head and said, James was terrified and fell unconscious on the ground. And here the doll jumped over his weak body and started hitting him hard as it walked over his body. And here James screamed and shouted loudly, so his family ran quickly to their son. And they found James in a state of pain, terror and disease in the doll in its place was sitting above seat and smile at them cunningly and cunningly foxes. James endured the shock and the family put him in a mental hospital for the insane. And the family sold the doll in an auction to sell haunted dolls. And the second victim was Jessie, a very beautiful eight-year-old girl who loves life. Her mother bought the doll on her birthday, and Jessie hung with the doll. She loved her so much, and she used to take her everywhere with her. One day, Jessie's cat died in a horrific way. They found her slain, torn in the abdomen, and completely eviscerated. And the little girl Jessie was very sad for her murdered cat. The girl was breaking down crying in her room 
and here she found a small, caring hand placed on her shoulders tenderly to pat her, and Jessie slowly raised her head to find the doll, Harold, and here the mother heard very strange sounds from her daughter's room, and heard laughter at night, whispers, and intense crying until the mother almost lost her mind because what is happening in her daughter's Jessie's room. So she pushed the door and found the doll sitting on her daughter's body and stabbing her in the face and playing with her. The mother fell unconscious and then the mother lost her mind. And then the doll was placed in the Haunted Dolls Museum in America. To this very day. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Next, we have another haunted doll to read. I hope you stick around for this one. In 1918, a young man purchased the doll that would later on claim the name of Okiku as her own for his two-year-old sister and the legend would kickstart a tourism flash. The doll was bought in a sopuro by a 17-year-old Ikichi Sasuki in 1918. For his two-year-old sister, Okiku, he was touring the region for a maritime exhibition, and the doll constantly drew his eyes. The perfect little thing sat on the shop window, enticing him. Suzuki didn't think twice. He went in and instantly purchased the figurine for his sister, used the last of his money for it. At about 40 centimeters tall and dressed in a traditional kimono, the doll was exquisite. Its hair was raven black and cut to roughly shoulder length in a traditional okapa hairstyle. Her eyes were piercing coals that seemed to swallow everything up in their gaze. The thing was mesmerizing and enchanting, something to take your breath away. Sasuke went back home and gave the doll to his little sister, the Thai doll immediately. It transformed into Okiku's favorite toy and more importantly, her best friend. Okiku played every day with the doll and took it everywhere and treated the figurine like a little sister. She would talk and prattle with the thing, feed it, sleep with it. She decided to call the doll Okiku, a mere duplicate of herself. The doll never left Okiku's sight. Then, a year later, tragedy struck. In 1919, Okiku died. Yellow fever had descended on the land and rubbed the family of the little girl. Okiku died gasping for air, in pain and afraid the doll held firmly only three years old. The family wanted to bury the doll along with Okiku, but circumstances and governmental oversight prevented this last act of kindness on their part. The doll was never laid, Okiku. That doll was alternatively located in the family's altar. A common practice in certain Japanese households to commemorate the dead. The small shrine celebrated their daughter and marked her passing into the afterlife. One day, the family started to notice that the ends see a traditional shoulder length cut with neat ends, now a mangled mess of split ends reaching down past her waist. It was scruffy, different colors, and felt different. At night, they started to dream what appeared by their signing. The chilling events intensified and grew into full-blown acts of spiritual infestation. Lights flicking on and off, banging in the house, noises and strange voices. The closer the year got to certain key dates, Okiku's birthday and the day of her death. Over time, 
They were certain and town shamans, spiritual leaders, conquered that their daughter's soul was in fact trapped within the doll. In 1938, the family relocated to a different district. They had by now become accustomed to Okiku and had even grown fond of their daughter's restless spirit. To them, it was a magical and a unique opportunity to interact with the dead. No desiring to take Okiku with them, fearing that what fueled her magic was proximity to her, their daughter's grave. The family approached to the local temple and asked them to take care of the doll. The temple by now had heard countless stories of the amazing doll, the haunted doll whose hair grew every year. They were fascinated, skipping like schoolgirls, with the prospect. The priest gleefully accepted the charge and started taking care of Okiku. Over time, they've managed to confirm the veracity of some of the claims, particularly that the hair does indeed grow. The priests have sent out cut samples of the hair for scientifically analyzed, scientifically examination of Okiku, proof that the hair was that of a human child. Regularly, the hair gets a trim and the doll stays happy and content. As the years passed on, the doll's fame grew and her powers further developed. She's bolder now, invading the dreams of the priests and those that come to visit her. She's stronger, her hair growing faster and wilder, and she's even spookier. The last event driving tourists mad is the frightening claim is that the mouth of Okiku is slowly opening and that if you dare to peer inside you, may be able to glimpse something like baby teeth spouting like weeds from porcelain gums. Okiku is located in her private shrine, on display in a wooden box in the Manenji Temple in the town of Iwamizawa, Hokkaido, Japan. She's there waiting for all who want to play with fire and have one-on-one -on -one conversation with the paranormal and the bizarre.